what is up my joe star family i'm here to yap to y'all about some tech and stuff real quick this is just a couple of things that i wanted to see changed over the course of time eventually for the health of the game so go ahead and like subscribe we'll get all that shit out the way in the beginning because i'm gonna yap for a bit but tekken 8's been out for a couple of months now and i honestly think that the game is damn near perfect in in most ways uh i really like a lot of the changes that we got i like the heat system i'm having fun with my character learning matchups all over again it's just a really good time but the first thing that i really wanted to talk about was the heat system itself because for everything that it does which is you know giving you an opportunity to extend combos reset neutral it gives characters that didn't have a panic button a panic button which is fantastic um the armor the armor is entirely too fucking much a lot of attacks have armored properties which means they can absorb a certain amount of hits before the attack itself comes out so in tekken revolution they introduced power crushes which gave the armor property to certain moves for every character and that was fine because you know it was only a couple of moves that you had to look out for that were armored and not everybody could do them out of situation out of every situation so like Huarang, most of his armored moves come from stances i think he only has one armored move uh down four or three that doesn't come from a stance everything else is you know stance based but we've gone from having power crush moves to your heat your heat burst, which is just, you know, hitting R1 to start your heat mode, has armor, right? <laughs> and your rage arts as well have armor, and you still have to deal with power crush in this game, which also has armor, and it's it's just it's too much. Too many things have way too much armor, and I don't I I was cool with power crushes having armor, because you know it's it's one thing. You know, I can look out for certain moves, that's fine. But when I'm applying pressure and you're telling me that now, not only do you have a button, you not only do you have a panic button, but it's an armored panic button? Nah, nah, man. And even going a step further, like if, you, if they were gonna keep, you know, let's just say we keep heat burst armored. Why the fuck is the super armored? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the decision was there with that because in other games, other games have super armor, like Guilty Gear has characters that have armored moves. Street Fighter 6 has drive impact, but also bigger characters like grapplers like Zangief, I know he has armor on a couple of his moves, but those are big hulking slow ass moves. Why the fuck is the super, which does 30 to 40% armored <laughs> like at that point you're kind of just encouraging people to spam or wake up super which you know after at a certain level you kind of expect it so you can react to it but even then like i don't think that that's something that like players should have to respect like if you're gonna if you're gonna use a super it's a, it's a risk it's a big risk it already it's already like minus 30 on block i believe for most characters so you can pun it's launch punishable with a with an uppercut but having your highest damage move be armored and then having that same move be attached to a mechanic that boosts your damage the lower your health is is, is just begging for that shit to be spammed i don't i don't think that's uh that's a good way to have that shit work <laughs> because again just like the amount of armor that's already existed in the game is plenty like your heat burst which gives you the potential to turn around around not round around already has armor attached to it and it puts you in a state where you're going to be doing more damage anyway so why why should the super <laughs> which is already the highest damage move in the game also protect you from getting hit it's a risk man it's a risky move to pull out in every fighting game and to my recollection this is the only get well no mortal kombat does it too but like i don't play mortal kombat so i'm talking about this one but this this and mortal kombat are the only two games that i know that do that that are like hey here's this 
big ass risky move that's gonna get you a lot of damage and we're just gonna protect you from any repercussions with that shit. Like, that I, I would like to see heat, or not heat, I would like to see armor removed at the minimum from supers. Like, I don't think supers need, rage arts need armor on top of like, they're already damage boosted properties because you can only do it once you get like, I think it's 15% health, 15% health or lower. And then the rage art does more damage the closer you are to death. So like, why would you, why would we armor that? But I'd, I'd like to see that go away from, uh, from rage arts at the bare minimum. Perfection would be seeing it removed from everything except power crushes, but I don't think that's gonna happen in all honesty. But just take it away from the super and we can we can start. That's a start for me. Next thing I'd like to see major changes to is the fucking tracking. Dear God, there are strings in Tekken 8 that track. So let's just say hypothetically, there's a, there are a couple of characters that have a, a one, two, three, or one, two, four string, where it's just two jabs and a kick, but everything has upgraded tracking even grabs like so i know they had um a good portion of the soul caliber team working on this game and if you didn't know in soul caliber grabs do track to an extent like left or right so you can't really if you if you miss the sidestep window you get grabbed even if you start the sidestep but in that game grabs are 18 frames so it's like you're you could see a grab coming and still sidestep in time and to kind of balance that out they gave the grabs tracking it doesn't really work so much in tekken because most grabs in this game are going to be anywhere from around 12 to 14 grabs which is way faster most most grabs in the game are around 12 frames so that's you have a fifth of a second to react to a grab that tracks to both sides and that kind of takes away from the movement changes that we got because movement got buffed in this game. Like you can back dash way faster. It goes further. Sidestepping is back to, I, I wouldn't say it's back to where it was in five, but like it's around six is sidestep before they started nerfing movement really hard. But they gave it back to us because in Tekken 7, you didn't go no fucking where. Like, you you were basically like hitting a two-step if you tried to sidestep in that game. But it's, it's kind of weird to make that conscious decision to buff movement, but then to also buff the tracking on everything. So back to the original point, like a lot of characters have like jab, 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 kick strings. In older games, if you block the jabs, you could sidestep the kick. In this game, everything has some form of tracking. Like there are there are homing moves that they made back in, um, well, they've always been in the game, but they gave them the additional homing property in, I wanna say it was tag two, where they started to classify them as homing moves to kind of counter sidestep play because not everything else tracked as good as homing moves. Now it's to the point where like, you know, your homing moves are insanely good at tracking and then, you know, your regular moves are also pretty good at tracking. So it, it's just, it's it's one of those, I guess, I guess hypocritical is the word or like counterintuitive is a better word. Counterintuitive things to buff movement, but then also buff the tracking of moves. And I, I would like, I would like some changes made to that. Like, I don't think your standard pokes or like just your regular buttons should have the tracking that they have. Obviously, if somebody throws a left-handed jab, I think it should track to an extent to the left, obviously, because that's, you know, that's the hand it's coming from, but like, it shouldn't catch an entire sidestep. And there are a bunch of characters with a bunch of strings that do that. Like Azucena's two, one, three, Lily has a, um, I think two, four it is, like a jab and then she'll do like a roundhouse, like a mid roundhouse. And that shit tracks to both sides. Like it's just kind of defeats the purpose of homing moves and we're just gonna have everything with that good tracking. But like definitely remove that shit off grabs because in Soul Calibur, it makes sense because you have a slower grab. But in this game where grabs are like 12 frames that it doesn't make sense to have them also track. That's insane. I, I would like to see the tracking removed from most things that aren't homing attacks or just like radial moves. I think that I think that'd be a pretty standard standard 
large improvement for the for the aggression of the game. The final thing that I wanted to talk about, and I probably could have talked about it in the first part, but I just remembered, is uh, the heat smashes. <laughs> so that's basically your attack when you are in heat mode, you hit R1. And I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with you having those attacks out of out of heat because it's a it's a unique mechanic to heat is a once around attack that doesn't bother me what bothers me is how it's implemented so there are some characters that either do insane damage from from a heat smash or they have a low hitting heat smash so i, I want to talk about the damage first like most characters that i've seen their heat their heat smash does about 50 to 60 damage which is just you know raw <laughs> and you can while you're in heat that's basically what you're threatening with so you you're playing the game normally but you also basically have this fucking howitzer cannon that you can unleash at any point that also leaves you plus after use that is unanimous across the board you're usually about plus three plus four after a heat smash Horangs, because that's who I mean, Horangs leaves him in right flamingo, which is just like, why the fuck did we do that? That's incredibly unsafe for us. You're still plus, but you can't block in flamingo stance. Well, I know I just gave all the hard stuck orange players some tech, but like, yeah, Horang cannot block in flamingo stance. And I I wanna I wanna know what the logic was behind leaving them plus after it, cause you're not plus after a rage art, so why the fuck are you plus after a heat smash? Everybody. And to make it worse, some characters like Victor have low hitting heat smashes. So not only do you do you have to guess, you know, for a low mix up from certain characters, but even if you manage to block that shit, you're still minus. <laughs> You're still minus after you block the damn heat smash. So what I would like, honestly, I would like more uniformity in all honesty. I don't think you should have mid and low hitting heat smashes. I think I think they should all be mid. If they're gonna if they're gonna basically like leave you at advantage if it's blocked or do huge damage if it hits, there's no reason you should have to guess a high low mix up. Granted, there are not a lot of low ones, but after playing online for like an hour and knowing that okay all of the characters that i've gone up against have mid hitting heat smashes and then you run into one that doesn't now you're you know you have to play your game a little bit differently and that's unanimous across the board like you're always under the threat of a high low mix up when a character's in heat and that shit is scary as fuck that doesn't change at any level of the game that's being played like just make the make the heat smashes mid and maybe make them zero zero on block i'm not saying make them minus but may, make them neutral at least i think that bring bring a little bit of fairness to the uh, to the mechanic itself because playing the game and like in conditioning your opponent to block a certain way and then just chipping them down while you're in heat and then ending that off while in advantage or ending it off and basically winning the round because you did a move that does crazy damage <laughs> is is just that's that's an insane thing to have happen like like i said i don't want to see it go away i just like to see it kind of fine-tuned just to you know just to keep the uh keep the neutral up really because having that shit be like insanely plus it's it's basically a mini rage art in some cases it is a rage art but having having it be advantageous no matter what happens is is pretty pretty od in my opinion but those are those are just the uh the major changes that i would like to see um i if y'all could think of anything else you know let me know in the comments Please share it up so it gets out to as many people. Uh, I usually stream Tekken 8 on Fridays right here on the channel. So be on the lookout for those. Uh, if any new news pops off, then, you know, I'll be right here, right here, ready to report it. I'll see y'all in the comments, man. Have a great day. Don't shade your shine. Peace.